helper I will not be afraid of what can man do to me The Lord is my helper I will not be afraid of what can man do to me I will boldly declare The Lord is watching over me I will not be afraid of what can man do to me. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid of what can man do to me. I will boldly declare the Lord is watching over me. love he's given us perfect peace <clears throat> perfect peace as our mind is stayed on him this last uh, the chorus that we just sang was taken from Isaiah the book of Isaiah chapter 26 and uh, talks about peace here God's kind of peace in Isaiah 26 verse 3 it says you O Lord will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. 
Praise God, yeah. I mean, that word perfect peace is something that I've had to really rely on, mm. you know, as I live life every day. Without peace, we truly can't live life. Mm -hmm. Peace is something that we need in things that we do and when we speak or whatever it is, walking in peace is so important. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, <coughs> the peace of God is truly a fruit of the Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, He puts peace on the inside of you. Some people have said, you know, when they receive Jesus, they sense this peace that comes on the inside of them. Mm. Because that's what Jesus, He's come to bring. That's in right. fact, He said in a place, I've come to bring peace. Yeah. You know, He said, I'm giving you peace, not as the world gives, but the peace that comes from me, it's mm. different. And it was a time when Jesus was getting ready to leave, you mm. know, um, He was going to be the sacrificial lamb for our right. sins. And all this time He has been around the disciples and now the disciples were telling Jesus, why are you leaving us, you mm. know, and we're going to be alone and all that. And Jesus understood them mm. and He told them, you know, I'm leaving, but I'm sending you a comforter mm. who's going to be with you forever. Right. <clears throat> because Jesus, as a man, He could only be around so many mm. people and not, you know, as a man you can only do so much, mm. but you know, spirit can travel distances right. and the Spirit of God, you know, He said, I'm leaving you the Holy Spirit right. and He will be your comforter, He will be your guide and He's going to live on the inside of you yeah. and remind you of things that I have said. Yeah. So you won't feel alone. It'll just be as if I'm still here. Exactly. Praise God for another good opportunity to come into your homes and talk the Word of God. And in this episode, we just want to talk about the peace of God because peace is something that all of us need. And you can be assured that one of God's promises is perfect peace for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're going through a situation right now where you feel doubt and worry and anxiety are just crowding your mind. Well, the Word of God is here to set you free today. Amen. So you've tuned into the right channel because God's perfect peace is available for you. Even as we read the scripture once again, there's a really important part we need to notice. And we're in Isaiah 26, 3. It says, as we've been reading, I want to read once again, but I want to emphasize a very important part. <coughs> it says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, or on the Lord, because he trusts in thee. The key to perfect peace, on living a life of perfect peace, is having your mind stayed on the Lord. Mm. It's easy for our mind to be, you know, focused on many other things. But if we want to walk in true peace and have a life, have a mind rather, that is sound and whole, it all goes back to where we are focusing our attention on. Mm. And there's a lot of things out there that want to take our attention from the Word of God. But we got to see, is it bringing me peace or is it making me disturbed? That's right. Because once you examine that, then you can cut off those sources <coughs> that are causing your mind to be troubled mm. and in turmoil. Yeah. You notice it says, whose mind is stayed on him. Mm. Now, Colossians 3 also mentions a very similar thing. I think where we focus our mind on is so important. Mm. Because it's and easy, yeah. It's easy to get distracted. Yeah, the way things get into our mind is, you know, through our eyes and through our ears. Mm. And, you know, we need to pay very close attention to what we're watching right. and what we're hearing. Because a lot of things, you know, like you said, they want to distract us and draw us away from peace. Mm. And sometimes without even thinking, we get too involved in something that doesn't produce anything, mm. doesn't bring any results or any fruit. Right. And then by the end of the <coughs> day, whatever it was you were doing, you feel very drained out mm. sometimes. You know, if our focus is on the wrong thing, we can feel very weary in our right. you know, physical bodies also because and of what yeah. we've been watching or listening to and paying attention to. And we ourselves, we have the ability to turn our minds. It's kind of like, you know, you turn it turn something in the right direction. Yeah, that's a good thing. We yeah. have the ability. We have the ability. 
And previously, we've been talking about you knowing yourself as Christ knows mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Christ sees you more than an overcomer. <coughs> Christ sees you victorious. That's right. And that's the image you want to build on the inside of you. Mm. And another important thing is that God wants you to walk in peace. Yeah. He doesn't want you to feel troubled and anxious all the time and worked up over nothing. That's because right. sometimes our attention is just, I mean, we worry for no reason. Yeah. Worry doesn't take you anywhere. Mm. It's only going to keep you bound and keep you in a place where you're not going to do great things for the Lord. Mm. And if it's something that you cannot, you know, make over again or mm. cannot go back and fix, then there's still no point worrying. That's right. And even if it is something you can't fix, mm. instead of worrying about it, fix it. Right. So living in peace is the will of God mm -hmm. for you to have a peaceful mind. And I'm <coughs> going to take you, as I said, in Colossians 3, the key to walking in the peace of God is where your mind is fixed on and fixing it on him is the most important thing let me kind of elaborate along with isaiah 26 3 colossians 3 verse 1 says if you've been risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ sits on the right hand of god mm -hmm. verse 2 is important it says set your mind on things above not on things on the earth once you mm. receive Jesus into your heart, you have the ability to um, steer your mind and your actions in the right direction. Yeah. You don't have to be controlled by them, your mm. actions doing the wrong thing or you making wrong decisions. You have the ability to control it. That's right. But where you keep your mind on, your attention fixed is so important. <coughs> when it says, you know, to fix your attention on the Lord, it's not just saying, okay, look up at the sky. Yeah. and say, okay, Lord, here's my attention. I'm mm -hmm. fixing it on you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's not what it means. No. Setting your attention on the Lord means you set it on His Word. Yeah. You set it on His promises That's right. in praying. That's fixing your attention on the Lord, mm -hmm. looking into the perfect law of liberty. So as we talk about peace, you know, I believe the Lord is setting many of you free out there. Because peace is a promise. Just like we've seen healing is God's will and God wanting you to rise up with confidence, God also wants you mm. to walk in peace. And, you know, in Philippians 4, 8, it gives us an idea of what to think about. Right. It says, you know, think on these things. And he says, finally, brethren, this is Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just and are pure and are lovely, and if there is any good report, if there be any virtue and praise, think on these mm. things. I love that. It gives us so many things to think about. Mm. You know, that itself should be like a guideline to right. us. Right. So that we can eliminate things that are not in this list. Mm. You know, anything that is not true, we can throw it out. Mm. Especially, you know, God's Word is true. Right. God's Word is the truth because it comes from the source of um, God, mm. God Himself. And God is he's somebody who does not change and He does not turn. Right. He does not, you know, change with the fashion or the patterns of mm. the world. But He is constant and He's somebody we can rely on. That's why He is true. So we think on things mm. that are true. And then we also focus on whatever is honest. Right. If it is dishonest, don't focus on it. Mm. You know, and then whatever things are just or <coughs> righteous. Right. And then pure, things that are pure. You know, why God is saying all these things, focus on these things. Because when we do, we won't feel physically drained mm. by the end of the day. And we won't feel like, you know, sometimes when you do the wrong things, you, f you have this guilt and the condemnation that is in you. And you feel, why did I do that? Mm. You feel that sometimes yeah. when you do the wrong thing. That's why God is saying here, focus on the right things. And then you can get your life, you know, because our mind leads us mm. in the way we should go. And if we set our affection, our hearts and our minds on that which is right. We can right. be in the right direction. That's true. And we can be in the right direction. I truly love that statement. Yeah. Is that when your mind is fixed on the Lord, you know that you're going on the right direction. 
and you know god wants us to live the above kind of life that's right just like this scripture in colossians that we saw he says to set your mind on things that are above mm. setting your mind on the promises of god like by his stripes i am healed and promises like the greater one lives on the inside of me those mm. will fill your heart with peace i've noticed the more i begin to say god's word out of my mouth and believe it the more my you know my mind starts to walk in this peace you know sometimes situations of life come and you feel trouble and you don't mm. know how to do something and you start worrying and trying to do a million things but the moment i decide okay god <coughs> I, i'm going to fix my mind on you mm. i'm going to fix my mind on your word and all of a sudden this peace starts to flood my mind yeah. i can see clearly what to do because you mm. know another thing is when you're in worry you can't see clearly yeah what to do yeah you just can't you just because your mind yeah. is going all over several directions you're, you're thinking i want a million do this, things yeah. i want to do that and what yeah so when you see the effects of worry why do you even want it's to worry misleading. yeah it's misleading and it's a natural course of life that we take but you know in walking in worry doesn't mean none of us have mm. but we can change that we can start to come to the place where the peace of god is what leads us mm. and another one another place it tells us to be led by the peace of god mm. that's in the colossians we're going back to colossians it says in colossians 3 was 15 It says let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which you are called and be thankful. Mm. So God's peace should rule your heart. Sometimes when the Lord has led you to do something inside of you there's this peace. You know that's the right direction. And sometimes if it's a disturbance sometimes that could be the Lord leading you not to do that. Yeah. You know that's why we need to follow what he's saying to us. Mhm. And when you are you know when you when you just cast down imaginations of worry and doubt and focus yourself on the word you'll begin to see his peace leading mm. you step by step and, and in times of worry and you know in especially in making a decision that's the wrong time mm. to make a decision that when is you're in worry yeah. and confusion because you really don't know what to do mm. that's why you know the first scripture it took us to you know um the peace the perfect peace yeah, perfect keeping peace. our minds stayed on the lord mm. so when you come to you know a situation where you're at in worry or in confusion just you know stop and think about the word of god right think about lord how would you want me to do this how would you do it you know if you were faced with this situation ask the lord and um like this verse says let the peace of god rule your heart you mm. will be able to make decisions better that way yeah and today if you feel like you're confused and you don't know what to do let me encourage you take this scripture and start to pray and believe it mm. as it says first of all you decide and say lord I'm, i refuse to walk in confusion any longer yeah i know that it has only misled me and it has only put me in a place of wanting and wandering and questioning but i'm going to put those thoughts aside and i'm going to say like this verse let your peace rule my heart Yeah. From this day forward, I want to be led by your peace. And his peace will lead you into the right path. Mm. I think of what David said in Psalm 23. He said, "You lead me beside the still waters." Yeah. He says, "You're my shepherd, and I won't want." Mm. You know, just picture God. He's like a shepherd. He's going before you. And he's saying, "Come, let me lead you. Let me guide you. You know, don't take that turn. I'll show you the right way." Yeah. He's like a shepherd. Yeah. A shepherd doesn't force his way over on the sheep. Mm. He gently leads them. Yeah. That's what the peace of God does. Yeah. It gently leads you in life. And if we have even strayed off or wandered into the wrong path, you know, God is a, you know, point fingers at us and says, "Where are you going? You're in the wrong direction." Mm. You know, he'll lead us again gently yeah. by his Holy Spirit right. and say, "Come, it's okay. You can take a turn and you know, walk again in the peace of God." Yeah. and living the above kind of life also includes living in peace. Mm. And you might say, is it strange that I'm worry free, I'm confused? Yeah. Well, no, it's not strange. Mm. You can truly live a life of <coughs> peace and joy. And we want to pray a prayer with you right now, a prayer of 
peace that will set you free from all kinds of worry and confusion. And we encourage you to pray this along with us. Mm. So just repeat it after us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. For your peace. For your peace. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. That you said. That you said. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the Prince of Peace. Father. Father, we refuse. We refuse to walk in confusion. To walk in confusion. We refuse to doubt. We refuse to doubt and worry and worry the rest of our lives. The rest of our lives. From this day forward. From this day forward. We make a decision. We make a decision to be led by your peace. To be led by your peace. And thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord. That as I fix my mind on you. That as I fix my mind on you. You will keep me in perfect peace. You will keep me in perfect peace. I receive your peace. I receive your peace that passes all understanding that passes all understanding in Jesus name in Jesus name amen amen so remember you can walk in the peace of God every day of your life